Hi, welcome back to my whiteboard. I'm Kevin Dorma. This is part five of the control series. We will look at pressure control because it can behave like a self-regulating process or a non-self-regulating process depending on how other interacting control systems are tuned. Pressure control is commonly used on utility supply systems to ensure reliable performance of a flow controller. We will look at an example where fuel gas pressure is controlled on the upstream side of a flow controller. One example of this is the firing train for a boiler. First, let's consider the case where the pipe volume is quite small. In this case, a change in the pressure control or flow control output has an immediate impact on both the pressure and the flow rate. This is an interacting system. The dynamics for both of these processes are very fast. If we use a ziegler nichols method to tune the controllers, then both controllers will try to meet its own objectives at the expense of the other controller. The controllers will fight. A more successful approach is to tune one controller to be slower than the other. The lambda methodology is preferred. In this case, fuel gas pressure is important because a steady pressure is necessary to maintain a steady flow rate. And we need steady pressure to ensure that high or low pressure alarms or trips are not encountered. Pressure must be tuned to respond fairly quickly, and the flow controller will be tuned to respond somewhat slower. How will the pressure respond? Since the flow controller is slower, let's assume that the flow valve position does not change while the pressure controller is in action. The pressure valve opens up and admits more fuel gas. The pressure in the pipe volume increases and the outlet flow increases. Everything levels out to a steady value. This is a self-regulating process, and we can choose an equal percent control valve and appropriate PID tuning constants. Now, let's consider the case where the pipe volume is quite large. This is still an interacting system, but the large pipe volume provides some surge capacity. In this case, the flow controller is more important to ensure steady firing of the equipment. Flow must be tuned to respond quickly, and the pressure controller will be tuned to respond somewhat slower. How will the pressure respond? Since the flow controller is faster, from the perspective of the pressure control, the flow always appears to be on set point. The pressure valve opens up and admits more fuel gas. The outlet flow rate is constant. The pressure in the supply header increases continuously as more gas enters the piping. This is a non-self-regulating process, and we can choose a linear control valve and appropriate PID tuning constants. Pressure control can behave as either a self-regulating or a non-self-regulating process. We need to tune a pressure controller and the associated flow controller so they work together as a team. This is where lambda methods are particularly useful. The response times for each of these controllers are chosen as design criteria. However, if the wrong control valve is used for either pressure or flow, then these two controllers may not respond in the required time and the system may not work together as a team. Part 6 will demonstrate issues with cascade control. I'm Kevin Dorma. Please visit my website at www.kevindorma.ca. Take care.